Hello everyone. Welcome back to Platformer Lessons. In lesson number three, we'll be looking at making stuff move when we want it to. In the previous lesson, we had our fly enemy, named Buzz, move across the screen to the right or left. But now let's look at making the player move when we press a button. Being able to interact with the game is important. We call it input, as in player input. When do we want to do so? Is it at the start or during the game? The answer seems pretty clear to me. We need to be able to play the game while it's running. So we need to be looking at the loop section of the code. Now for input, we need to check if the player is pressing any buttons. This is called a condition. In order to check for a condition, we use what we call an if statement. Using an if statement allows us to create an effect when the condition is true. So I'm going to write out the structure of an if statement. We start off with the word if, and you notice it turns purple just like the word self. If is not only a keyword in Python, but almost every other computer language. It's very important for the logic of code. Next, we want to check if a certain condition is true. Notice how I use a double equals sign. This is shorthand for saying is equal to. You'll notice this a lot in most coding languages. When we want to check if two things are equal to each other, we use a double equals sign. Now keep in mind, this is only for an if statement. At the end of the if statement, we always add a colon. This tells the computer that the conditions are finished. And on the next line, we should do the effect. Notice how the computer has automatically added some space on the next line. That means that every line after here is going to be part of the if statement. It's going to happen when that condition is true. So if I say do effect here, this line is going to happen only if this condition is true. You can add more lines if you like. You can do another effect. Every if statement can have as many effects as you like. If you want to exit an if statement, all you have to do is go to the next line and press backspace. Once you're right up against the wall again, you are no longer inside the if statement and you can type whatever code you like afterwards. Now you might notice if you try to play your game right now, you're going to get an error in the console. That's because our if statement is not actually set up properly. I've just been telling you the structure for it. Let's actually set it up properly so it does something. First, I only want this if statement to do one thing, so I'm going to get rid of this second line. Next, I want to actually check for a real condition. The condition I'm looking for is if the player presses a button of some kind. Now Pixelpad has a function to check if the player has pressed a button. It's called key underscore was underscore pressed. And we also need these round brackets and an apostrophe. Now inside the apostrophe, we want to tell the computer what key we're looking for. In this case, I'm going to use the space bar. So inside the apostrophes, I just press the space bar once. And to us, that just looks like a blank space. But to the computer, that's telling it to check for the space bar. Next, I want the if statement to do some kind of effect. The effect I'm looking for right now is I'm just going to print a message into the console. We can do that with the print function. And just like the key was pressed function, we need the round brackets and apostrophe. 
Now you can type anything you want inside these apostrophes and it'll show up in the console below. I'm going to type hello world. That's a little standard text that programmers like to use to see if things are working. And if I press play, I can pre now press the space bar to have that message show up below. And I can press that as many times as I need. And every time it shows a new message. Now notice that this code, this print message, is not happening every time the loop runs. It only happens when I press the space key. That's because it's part of this if statement and it only happens if key was pressed is true. So next, let's look at actually moving the player. Instead of doing this code inside the game loop, let's actually move to the player code. Click on the player class, and you notice it doesn't have any code in it whatsoever, except for these little comments here, player start and player loop. Let's go to the player loop and add a couple if statements. Now when we move, we want to check if the player is holding down the key instead of just pressing the key once. There's a variation of key was pressed called key is pressed. We're going to use that here. So we're going to check if key underscore is underscore pressed. Now inside these round brackets and apostrophe, I'm going to use the D key. You can choose any other key you like. And once again, we need a colon at the end of our if statement. And on the next line, we're going to make the player move to the right. Now, in the game loop, we wrote the code as self.buzz.x plus equals one. That moves our fly enemy across the screen. Inside the player, it's going to be a little different. Since we're already inside the player class, all we have to do is say self.x. Self references the player. And if we say plus equals one, that will move the player to the right. If I hit stop and play, and I press the D key, I start moving along the screen. Now I can only move right right now. Let's add the next two lines to make us move to the left. Remember, we want to exit this if statement, so we need to press backspace on the next line to make sure we're right up against that wall. I'm going to add an extra line in between my if statements to make it easier to read. The next if statement is going to be almost the same as the one above. I'm checking if a key is pressed, and this time I'm going to use the A key. Remember your colon at the end of your if statement. And on the next line, I'm going to say self.x minus equals one. That decreases the x position of the player and makes them move to the left. And with that, when you hit play, you should be able to move left or right. Now you might be wondering about moving up and down. We're not going to manually control that aspect of the game. In the next lesson, I'll show you how to make the player always falling down due to gravity and how to jump properly. Now, once again, you can adjust these numbers to be as fast or as slow as you like. If we change these to be the number three, we move quite a bit quicker, three times as fast. Pick a number that works for you. That brings us to the end of lesson three. 
Today, we looked at if statements with conditions and effects. We learned how to use key was pressed and key is pressed to do slightly different things. And we learned how to use the print function. Using print is a very helpful way to see if your code is working the way you want. In the next lesson, we'll look at how to make the player fall to the ground, but land on top. We'll also give the player the ability to jump. I'll see you there.